We haven't been in the second round, period. We got we got to we got to do better and uh, we got to play better, and hopefully we can uh, accomplish. If we don't accomplish it, gotta go back, gotta go back, work hard again and again and again. Giannis is locked in, and the Bucks suffered a lesson learning defeat to the Celtics in the first round of last year's playoffs. We're here to break it all the way down. The prospects for the upcoming season, players and rotations, Rick Kamla, Greg Anthony, Hall of Famer Kevin McHale. And coach, I start with you first. What specific lessons did the Bucks learn in losing to the Celtics a year ago? Some positives. They learned Antetokounmpo can really play well for seven games. They know they found out Middleton can get on fire for seven games, and they found out they need more playmaking against a top-tier defensive team like Boston Celtics to try to beat them in a seven-game series. Just not enough guys off the bounce being able to get to the rack and make plays for each other. Yeah, I think they also listen. They got to improve not just offensively but defensively. Yes, they they still weren't as good on either side of the ball. And this is where I think from an offensive standpoint, Mike Boonholzer is going to make a huge difference because as great as uh, Giannis has been, as terrific a talent as he, as he is, I still want to see him play better without the basketball yep. offensively. You know, he's always got to be accounted for. Easier to load to him on a team that doesn't shoot it as well from the perimeter where there's not a lot of ball movement in the half court. Now, I think that's one of the strengths of Mike Budenholzer. I think you're going to see this team become a little more dynamic offensively. I think their p- passing and spacing will improve because that's what he's noted for and had a lot of success with the Hawks. Yeah, you know, he's always going to draw the other team's best defender. So when he's setting screens and popping, that can shake things up for him. He always doesn't have to have the ball in his hands. I'd like to see him, I'd like to see them get more ball handlers that can come off the screen and make plays. But that throwback to Giannis and having him come downhill on you. It's, he's almost impossible to guard with space out there. He's so long and he's got that Euro step and he's so clever. But I agree, I think off the ball, he's just got to become a better player popping and then his shots just got to improve some. He's been he's getting better at it. He's just got to become a better player popping and then his shots just got to improve some. He's been he's getting better at it, but just still got to get uh, more improvement. So Giannis Antetokounmpo finished sixth in MB, MVP voting a year ago, posting career highs in points, rebounds, field goal percentage. So is it MVP or bust for Giannis this year? James Harden may be snickering as he watches the show, but are you thinking an MVP year for Giannis here? I, I think it's dependent upon how well the team does. Yeah. The reason James Harden won the MVP last year was that his team was the one seed in the Western Conference. I think if you see this Buck team move up into the top four and get home court in that first round and his numbers are where they were this past season, I think he's going to get credit for that and I think you're going to see him elevate in the MVP talk. But if it's just a stat statistics laden output from him and the team is not showing growth, then I don't know that you're going to see him improve upon that uh, standing in terms of the MVP voting. Yeah, no. MVP or bust, no, not for Antetokounmpo. It's improve your team a lot, become better, be- get home court advantage, advance to the second and third round. But, you know, Anthony Davis may have something to say about that uh, MVP. Kevin Durant, James Harden. There's some players out there to, you know, to say MVP or bust, that's too much. I just think, I, th- I do believe he's going to get better. But he's got to drive that team to more wins. All right, so we'll see how that works out. And uh, you mentioned Coach Mike Budenholzer. And when he was in Atlanta, winning a Coach of the Year award, by the way, his system was all about pace, space, ball movement, five guys on the floor who could shoot. Um, Is that system a good fit for Giannis and the Bucs? Yeah, I think it will be eventually. I think that, yeah, you're right. You know, Budenholzer's system was the best teams he had in Atlanta. The ball really popped, but he didn't have one really dominant player. That they, I think with Antetokounmpo and having a dominant player, you've got to figure out how to, how to blend him in with everything, and especially a system that you've liked ball moving in. So it's going to be a little bit of a um, probably a, a learning time for both coach and Antetokounmpo to fit into a system. And uh, But I do like it. I think he's creative. I think he'll put... I think he'll put um, the Greek freak in a lot of interesting positions to succeed. And that kid, that, that, that kid can play. Uh, he's a yeah. tremendous player. <laughs> and I think he also will help Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. Um, and, and, and listen, anytime you're a great player, the one thing all teams want to do is create space for their best player. And so I, I, that's why I think that Budenholzer is a really good hire for them and a good fit in that regard. But th- listen, overall, I still look at their roster. And as great as he is and as good as Middleton uh, has progressed, yeah. they still have to elevate, either through improving the guys that are there or potentially, potentially through acquisition. So I, I still don't look at their roster yet as being 
in that upper tier no. in, in, the, in the Eastern Conference. But, you know, Giannis could prove us wrong if he continues to elevate his play. Right, I agree. Another shooter or two, another playmaker, you know, in the one through four, because Giannis is kind of a unique four guy. Their, you know, their center spots really got a big hole in it, honestly, to be truthful. I think Hinson just has a hard time scoring the ball. Brooke Lopez is, really has a tough time uh, defensively wise in today's game and stuff. So they're going to have to shore that up, I think, to, you know, to take that next jump. Let's talk Chris Middleton. Uh, he comes off an amazing season, best season of his career, average career highs in points. 20.1, rebounds at 5.2. How do he and Giannis complement each other? I think very well because he's not a ball-dominant player, you know, and, and so it helps when you're a best player because most best players are ball-dominant. And so he's a complimentary piece in that he can catch it, score it off the catch. Uh, he can create when needed. You know, he can play in space. Uh, I, I think he's – I, I got to say, I, I think he – had a better year than I thought he would have yeah. a season ago. And he was, and Kevin was talking about, how good was he in the postseason last year? I he, mean, so. he was incredible. And so I, I do think he is proving to be capable of being a part of that right. one-two punch with Giannis. So they're fine in those areas. But to Kevin's point, they need elevation uh, across the board in those other areas. They're fine with those two. I think he really benefited from, they put the top defender Onto Tacumpo all the time, and now you're another wing guy. He, he had, you know, he had some defenders on him. He was much bigger than, like in that Celtics series. He just took those guys in the mid post. I didn't know he had that kind of mid post game. A little turnaround fade away, little face up, little shot. And he was so effective there. And all of a sudden, you start saying, "Boy, I can see that." You know, I mean, how many teams have really legit defenders? At, you know, at the wing spots all the way through. There's usually a couple guys that aren't, aren't very good defenders there, and he takes advantage of those guys. So Middleton's playing with the right guy in Antetokounmpo because Antetokounmpo draws so much attention. He's got ability, and his, his little post-up, little mid-range game there really impressed me. I want to go back to the center conversation that, that we've touched on a little bit here. I don't here want to go back. In terms of, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, Brooke Lopez is who he is in the NBA. He's a terrific shooter for a seven-footer. He's limited defensively. But like we talked about, Coach Bud wants all five guys on the court to be able to shoot, and Lopez can do that. No, he can shoot it. And listen, in essence, he signed a deal for a minimum contract at yeah. this stage of his career. So it's a good value to have a guy who's been an all-star, you know, who's been the best player on a playoff team, uh, on that roster, and, and it is an upgrade in, in some respects. But overall, that position, John Henson has been solid, but in order for you to compete and contend in the Eastern Conference, you've got to elevate those positions. If you look at the top teams, you look at what Toronto's got going on on their front line, you look at Boston, that's who they're competing against. Mm -hmm. You look at what Washington has done in this past offseason. So in order for them to get into that upper tier, they're going to have to improve across the board. And that center position, not just offensively, but at times defensively, because yeah. uh, you've got to be able to guard in space. And, and that's going to be an issue for Lopez. Even Henson struggles with that against dynamic perimeter players when he gets switched out on them. So they're going to have some questions and some concerns that they're going to have to address here in the preseason. Thon Maker might be a guy that they yes. can plug in there. He can, he can make some shots. He can spread the floor like uh, Budenholzer likes as a coach. But he also, you know, he can block shots. And he can get down in the stance and move his feet. So I think that he might be a guy that as the season progresses – starts taking some of that center spot and you know if that happens and he matures and gets better that's going to just elevate their team overall because I, I i agree with you i think in today's game five guys that can shoot and five guys that i think the cooper going to basket is impossible to guard look out oh a cooper that's a man's jam yeah. Giannis trailing the lob. Oh. And Giannis in the open four. Oh, with the stylish finish. Welcome back to the Bucks preview show. Rick Kamla, Greg Anthony, and Kevin McHale. And let's break down Giannis Antetokounmpo here on the court. How do the Bucks get him going more downhill, guys? Well, Kevin, you want to talk a little bit about him not having the basketball. Right. We, we know how good he is with it, but the next level for him in terms of development is his ability to not have it and still find ways to score. In the break, the guy's unguardable. He did some things last year in the playoffs that I literally went, oh, my God. I mean, he just dunking and crazy, but he's going to have to learn how to play off the ball. But this is a 
allow Bledsoe and some of these other guys to play a little bit better. So let's just, just run through a little screen and roll. Greg, start over here with the ball. You're guarding me, okay? So now what happens Pack a lot of lunch, times, huh? yeah, a lot of times what happens is that you're, I'm going to set the screen and roll. You're just going to show a hair. Just, just to slow Greg down. So as soon as Greg comes off, and he, now if he throws back to me right here, now I'm going downhill because yeah. you're in no man's land. Mm -hmm. Corner's filled, corner's filled, slot is filled, shooter who's going to circle behind me after he throws back. But I'm coming downhill now. Someone's got to make a decision. So as I get in here, you fill from the strong side corner, boom. You come from the weak side corner, boom. And you don't get there early. He's like Dr. J in a way. Yeah. If you don't get there early, he gets to his launching pad, just duck your head. So where, where's the launching pad for Yas? Well, like well, where, where well, it's it's about right for, there. Launching pad for most <laughs> mortals are about right here, you know. His launching pad is way out here. It so really honestly, is. As, as, as you're a defender, take the ball right here. And you're going to be Giannis, even though that's a really stretch, Kamala. Big stretch. Right, here's the thing. As you're driving, i got to leave now when you're there. And I've got to try to get to here and take a charge because you're not blocking that guy's shot. With most players, as a big, you can hang here and make all your decisions late. I remember the first time I hung here on Dr. J and made my decision late, I was wearing the ball as he just <laughs> hacked it on me. And that's the same thing that, that Antetokounmpo gives you. He makes you make decisions as a, as a rotating big so much earlier. But get him off the ball more, get him in pick and yeah. rolls, and then what's going to happen? Get those guys shooting so you hug up on me on the pick and roll and don't want to leave my body. He's going to be wide open. I set a good screen. It's the same thing. If you, if you hug up on me now, I've, 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 I've split it a couple of times. You just stay on me. I set a screen here. You're not helping at all. Greg comes off. He's wide open. He can turn the corner. He can make a shot. So getting him setting screens, getting him setting wide pin downs, getting him off the ball in movement should be great for him. And the other thing, too, is in today, game we see a lot of switching one yes. to five and again you're going to create two mismatches right it, Eric Bledsoe is dynamic enough with the basketball to get by people if I got switches where we're running that same pick and roll and now when he sets that screen if you jump out on me right you're going to jump out on the other side right, you're going to yeah. come out that right, way you go. when you jump up first thing that we got we got a quick dive yeah with a mismatch there we can uh, cross court it yeah he can go direct post or I can take advantage of this play and break down that big. Yeah. I can get in the paint, force help, and again, I got Giannis down there. Yeah. I, got, I got corner opposite. I got a lot of different things. I just think that's an area where you're going to see him utilized a lot more in terms of Giannis is it, putting him in screen actions, off the ball. If he's setting pin downs, if he's setting flares where you got to honor, if he set good screens, he's going to create a lot of opportunities where he's getting catch and shoot. And that's another area, too, Kev. If he improves the jump shot to the point where he's money from 17 feet, where you got to honor it, that guy could become the most unguardable player in the NBA. And then, then one other thing to look at, you know, Middleton can just stroke it. You're not leaving Middleton in these corners. Mm -hmm. So as, as all this stuff's happening, Greg's got the ball, he's, he's you know, Bledsoe coming off here. I'm on the Tacupo, I'm rolling. Middleton's guy's over here saying, you know what? <laughs> I'm not leaving this guy, yeah. so I'm staying here. So all of a sudden, the court gets so much bigger, bigger when you have a really good shooter on one side. You have ball handlers. You got divers. I, I just think he's an interesting player that you can do a lot of stuff with. I love it. Can't wait to watch it. And we're going to give you a look right now at the Bucks' projected depth chart. And you will see two key free agent additions in the aforementioned center Brook Lopez and coach bud fave Ursan Ilyasova. They drafted MOP of the Final Four, Dante DiVincenzo, at 17 overall. But let's focus on a couple of guards, starting with Malcolm Brogdon, who can play a variety of positions. What role do you see him playing on the Bucks this season? I think somewhat similar to what he was a year ago. I think he's going to potentially back up the one and the two. Um, listen, I, I thought he showed improvement from a year ago. Uh, he's going to have to continue to do that. You know, he's going to have to defend that those uh, two positions, give them stability coming off that bench and improve their depth. I think his growth is going to be important. And a lot of their development as a group is going to come, as, as you heard Kevin talk about, from the growth of those young players. Thon Maker, is he ready to be a part of a rotation yeah. full time now? That's going to be big. Brogdon, can he take another step from where he's gone the last two seasons? And the other big one is going to be Ilyasova. I, I really think he's going to be important because why? He can shoot the basketball. He makes the floor bigger. That was another concern for this Bucks team a season ago. I think we're going to see him play faster, and I think the court's going to be bigger because of what Bodenhauser is going to try to implement from an offensive scheme standpoint. 
Coach, Brogdon, I want to ask you about one, one quick thing on Brogdon. Just, he plays the game up here. He doesn't play it with his feet. He's not a great, great athlete. He just is a really high IQ player, knows how to play. And when you get a lot of movement and you get a lot of different um, um, cuts and reads, that's where he becomes so important. He's going to be able to see what's happening a step ahead. And I really like the kid. He, put, he can put the ball on the floor. He can find people. So I think Brogdon's going to be a big part of this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's all good. Is, uh, is this Eric Bledsoe's final season in Milwaukee? Like, is he a good fit with Giannis? Are they looking long? term with him or might he be moved before the deadline I, I'm a, I want to see him play with coach Budenholzer putting him in situations just to succeed and play well I wouldn't I wouldn't give up on him just yet because he's got some dynamic to him but I'll tell you one thing Rozier last year in the playoffs he got up into him and, yeah. and he did a great job you can't afford to have your second best player almost taken out of a series by one defender like it was last year I, I would say this think about what Budenholzer did with Jeff T played his best basketball yeah. for him Dennis Schroeder played his best basketball for him. I think that he could have a similar impact on Drew on Eric Bledsoe's game if if somehow he can get him to be a little bit better and quicker with his decision making and a little, little bit more consistent with his shot selection. People get caught up in your shooting percentage. Yeah. Your ability to take good shots is every bit as important as your ability to make them. And you almost called him Drew Bledsoe. I sure did. I know. I sure did. Like, okay, I know. That was a Boston. Wow, well, that, that, that was a whole other story. <laughs> a different sport. <laughs> It's the Bucks preview show, and they have made the playoffs in three of Giannis's five seasons in Milwaukee. However, the franchise hasn't won a playoff series since 2001, but they are hoping that a new arena, new coach, and talented roster can take them to greater heights in 2018-19. And let's talk Dante DiVincenzo. You know, we talked about Bledsoe and Brogdon and all these guards. Does he fit into the plan this year or beyond? You know, it's a tough call. He didn't have uh, any participation really in the summer. I, I think he's a very talented young player. I would be surprised if he's a part of the rotation this year. Uh, if he is, that might not be a positive sign for the Bucks. Um, but I do think it may take him a year or two before he's caught up to speed with this game and ready to have an impact on a playoff roster. I look at him, and, and I think that if he is in the rotation, it's probably a good thing because I think that, he, that then they're deep enough that he's beat some people out. So if he does play for them, that means his shot's going down. That mean his, means his athleticism is coming into play. So I just think if the kid can find his way on the floor, he can help them. But there's a lot of competition there, man. It's hard as a rookie coming in uh, trying to beat a lot of these guys out. So I think if he does get on the floor, it'll be a positive for the Bucks. All right, it's prediction time here. So we're going to do more or less than 48 and a half wins. Mm. I'm going to say less. E even though I got a lot of confidence in, in Budenholzer and what he's going to be able to bring to the table. But I, I think sometimes we forget that the Eastern Conference continues to improve. And there are going to be a lot of teams that are better than they were a season ago. And, and so I just think it's going to be a challenge. I think they're a playoff team, but 49 wins would be a lot in his first year. Yeah, I'm, I am going to go 49, though. or I'm going to go on the over or more depending on which way you want to say it. Uh, <laughs> Semantics. And so, yeah, and so I just think that they're going to come out. I think they've got a lot of enthusiasm. You know, they, they took the Celtics to seven last year in the playoffs, got a new coach coming New in, arena. New arena. So I think that they're, they're, they're going to get some juice out of that thing. So I, I do see them playing. Now, I don't believe that they can beat Toronto or Boston. And, uh, you know, so we'll see where that goes. You don't want to play those in the playoffs. You, to get to the second round, you want to avoid those guys early. All right, quickly. So uh, Giannis MVP voting last year, as we said, he was sixth. Does he climb up? Is he second or third, or does he win the award? I, I think he climbs up. Uh, yeah. I, if, he's, if they win 50 games, I think he's going to have a chance to win the MVP. Yeah, I think he'll be in the top three or four going from six. But there's some uh, – LeBron, I mean, AD, AD uh, James Harden, Kevin Durant. Curry. Stuff. There's some players out there you got to beat out to move up. And don't forget about Kawhi now. Yes. Ooh, good call. Agreed. Yeah. Good call. Yeah.